the gods within the Iliad. The gods are the most powerful characters within the Iliad and play various narrative and thematic roles within the poem. By studying how they interact with the mortal characters and their responses to events within the novel, we can begin to see how key the gods are to the overall makeup of the Iliad. I'm going to be focusing on three main points regarding the gods in this video. How and why they help the heroes within the Iliad, their relationships with their mortal children, and the hierarchy and roles amongst the gods, as well as how these link to key ideas within the poem, such as piety and family. Within the Iliad, the direct assistance of the gods usually comes during the battle. For example, when Athene brings Achilles' spear back to him in Book 22, or when Aphrodite takes Paris away from his stall with Menelaus in Book 3. In both cases, these actions are taken to ensure the survival of each character. Athena gives Hector no time to retaliate against Achilles' failed attack, and Aphrodite spares Paris of being killed by Menelaus. Considering the immensely short lifespan of the characters compared to that of the gods, I would question why the survival of these characters matters to the gods at all, especially considering that the war has no effect on the gods either. However, the reasons given by the gods themselves seem to be given on the basis on of how the characters have shown or not shown respect for them. Aphrodite, for example, was chosen by Paris to have the golden apple, thus naming her the fairest goddess, therefore showing the most respect to her. Athene, conversely, was not chosen by Paris and therefore seems to be against Troy for this reason. The gods also use sacrifice as a way of persuading the other gods to help a character. For example, she shows great reluctance over Hector's death, explaining that he had burned the thigh bones of many oxen to me as a reason for his sympathy. This same fact is brought up later by Apollo in Book 24. He uses this argument as a reason to save Hector's body from Achilles. Through both showing open favour to certain gods and sacrificing to them, the characters achieve important aid from these gods within the poem. Homer is therefore highlighting here through the reasons behind divine intervention, the importance of piety within society, and how it can impact greatly on large-scale events such as war. It's also interesting to observe the relationships the gods have with their mortal children within the Iliad, most notably between Thetis and Achilles, and how these may differ with mortal family relationships. In her article, Thetis in Iliad 24, which you can find in Omnibus issue 63, Barbara Graziosi points out that Thetis grieves not after Achilles' death, but before as well. We see her in Book 24 weeping for the fate of her own excellent son, whom she was to see die in fertile Troy, before Achilles has yet to even reach his fate, which Graziosi highlights as the physical and temporal separation between Thetis and Achilles. As a goddess, Thetis already has prior knowledge of Achilles' fate, and therefore must live with the knowledge that soon her mortal son will be taken away from her. The way Thetis grieves is also significantly different to how a mother would have been expected to mourn for her child at the time. Instead of openly mourning her son by tearing out her hair and wailing in grief, Thetis instead chooses to put on a deep blue veil, and thus display a symbol of her grief instead. Graziosi argues that, this, that just this symbol alone is enough as an expression of Thetis' grief, and that the symbol alone of her grief is difficult enough for Thetis to bear. This suggests, therefore, that the grief of the goddess runs much deeper than that of a mortal mother, who has no knowledge over when or where, where her child will die, or if it will even die before her. Thetis is forced to deal with the fact that she will see her son die, and that she therefore has no control over his own mortality and death. We see a similar instance of this in Book 16, where Hera reminds Zeus that he must resign himself to the fact that his son, Sarpedon, will die on the battlefield at the hands of Patroclus, and that there is no use in saving him. Again, inst instead of showing any physical signs of grief, Zeus instead lets drops of blood rain to the ground to do honour to his dear son, again carrying instead a symbol of his grief rather than openly expressing it. However, Thetis still shows the same concerns as a mother does, as Graziosi points out, while her son is still grieving in Book 24. She suggests to him that it is a good thing to joy with a woman in love, and asks how long he plans to go without food or sleep, displaying her concern in his physical and emotional well-being. Here Homer presents her as if she is an ordinary mortal mother, caring for and comforting her son in his time of grief, thus installing a hint of humanity within her. Therefore, Homer presents to us here that although the gods may perceive their children differently to other mortal parents, they still show the same amount of care as any parent would, thus adding an interesting dynamic to the theme of family within the Iliad. 
In the Iliad, it is also interesting to note the hierarchy amongst the gods. It's clear to see in Book 8 that Zeus holds at least most of the power on Olympus when he forbids any of the gods from intervening with the war. The fact that the gods follow this and try to plan ways to distract Zeus from their interference suggests that Zeus holds the most amount of respect amongst the gods, which is understandable as he is commonly depicted as the king of the gods. However, there are some instances where Zeus must ask for permission of the majority in order to proceed with a certain action, such as in Book 22 when Athene reminds Zeus that the gods will not approve of him saving Hector, which he ultimately agrees with. Therefore, although Zeus gives the final approval of the decisions made on Mount Olympus, he still needs the approval of the majority of the gods in order to proceed with any actions himself, making the rule of Olympus seem more like a democracy than a monarchy. However, you could also argue that Hera holds some power over Zeus as well. For example, when Zeus debates in Book 16 whether he should save Sarpedon or not, it is Hera who convinces him otherwise, and reminds Zeus that Sarpedon is destined to die either way. She also exercises her sexual power over him in Book 14, where she convinces Zeus to sleep with her in order to distract him from Poseidon's aid to the Greeks. Therefore, although Zeus has official power in Olympus, Hera still has some power over his decisions. The gods play a huge part in the plot of the Iliad, and as we can see, are used by Homer to convey the importance of power, family, and piety in times of war and conflict. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye!